All right, now let's just take a breath. Do you remember back to when you were first given questions like this? Um, something like this, I don't know. Um, x squared minus x on... Something like that, okay? Now, when you first met rational functions like this and had to learn how to graph them, and when you learned calculus, you were so unfamiliar with these and there were so many steps. You were like, intercepts, vertical asymptotes, horizontal or oblique or whatever, stationary points. There was like 15 things you had to learn. Okay, and so in order to do this well, you kind of had to, well, you had to develop an algorithm. Oh, I'm going to do this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And so, for instance, the way that I do it, this is my, um, I've had longer to think about this one, so I have a nice, easy mnemonic for this. You factorize first, right? Then you work out what your asymptotes are, which are just your x and y's. You work that out from your domain and from your extremities. Then you work out your intercepts, and then you use the factors to shade your regions and say, I'm positive, negative, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, okay. Now, now, if I gave you that question, you'd be fine with it, because you've been doing it for so long. But all of this stuff is fresh, okay? So I'm going to give you a, um, an algorithm for going through circular motion questions, okay? Now, I tried and failed to come up with a nice mnemonic. I had no vowels, so if you can come up with alternative letters for what I'm about to tell you, then um, you're more than welcome, and I would love to find out. But um, there are basically, there are four things you've got to tick off, and then you can work out how to do this. Okay, so, no prizes from me for working out what's the first one. Draw a diagram. Thank you. Okay. Now, the important thing about the diagram is it's got to have all the forces on it. The forces are the important thing because as we go further down, the force equations are what you're going to need to work with, okay? Um, importantly, like I said before, don't put on mr omega squared. It's the sum of all the resulting forces that are set, heading back toward the center of motion, okay? But it's not an actual physical force like tension or gravity or, or the reaction force off the table, those kinds of things, okay? So draw a diagram. Right? Draw all the forces on it, but don't draw m r omega squared, okay? Because it's the sum of forces. The second thing you've got to do is once you draw your big fancy diagram, okay, you use a combination of whatever trig and geometry you need to work out. Now, here's the thing, right? This diagram, it's all about the forces, okay? The trig and the geometry is to work out now where are those forces pointed, what angles, right? And how big are those forces? Okay, what are the magnitude of those forces? So you use trig and geometry to work that out. Okay, you might be able to guess what three is. When you've got all of those forces in weirdo, wacky directions, you should resolve them. Okay? Almost. Now, you, you resolve it into the two different components, right? Namely, um, horizontal and vertical. Right? Okay? Now once you have those, you add them all up, you've got all of your horizontal forces, they should add up to m r omega squared, you've got all your vertical forces, whatever they are. Um, usually, by the way, you've got m r omega squared here, and if it's uniform circular motion, then the vertical forces should add up to zero. Okay, final step, and this is the hard part. Based on whatever question they're asking you, you have to solve the force equations. Okay, you have a couple of them. Work out what they're trying to ask you and then fit in all your information. Diagram, whatever geometry you need, resolve out all the forces after you've worked out the directions, and then solve.